of God this morning, if we can, in Mark's Gospel, chapter number four. Mark's Gospel, chapter number four. And we'll begin reading at verse number 35. Mark's Gospel, chapter number four, beginning at verse number 35. The Word of God says, On the same day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose. And the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then Jesus arose and he rebuked the wind. And he said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? And how is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and they said to one another, Who can this be, that even the wind and the sea would obey him? As I prayed and as I meditated for this awesome assignment that God has given unto us, the Spirit of God took me back some 19 years when I was sitting in a Bible study setting at the Greater St. Stephen's Full Gospel Baptist Church. And our international presiding bishop began to share the word that God had given unto him as it related to this awesome fellowship. And here we are now, some 19 years later, and God has moved him into an awesome place of destiny. Not just him, but God has moved this fellowship to a great place of destiny and influence. And as I begin to look at all that transpired over the years, it amazed me how it is that through all of the challenges, all of the tests, all of the trials that were experienced, we were still able to make it to a place of destiny. And the Spirit of the Lord began to show me that the reason that we are where we are today, the reason that our international presiding bishop is, is such a successful man, a man walking in destiny, is because no matter what happened throughout the years, no matter what tests, trials, or challenges came his way, he was always able to stay connected to his word. So, so with that in mind today, I want to challenge each of, each of us with that same thought, stay connected to your word. I think it's, it's, it's very important that we understand, saints of God, that in this season, we're dealing with an enemy that understands the principles of seed, time, and harvest probably better than the average believer. When you really look and study the devil, you'll find out that he is more convinced than most believers that when the seed of God's word, when it connects with the good ground of your heart, the devil is convinced that that seed will ultimately produce. Therefore, what the devil has done is he's developed a very subtle, he's developed some persistent efforts in order to make sure that the believer is always separated from the Word of God. Because the enemy knows that your heart is designed to produce. So, 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 so therefore, saints of God, when, when, whenever God gives us a word, whenever God gives us a promise that is designed to propel us into our place of destiny, when that promise and when that word is manifested, you can be well assured that that promise and that word, it will bless your life. But not only will it bless your life, it will also bless the life of other people. And it will also put you in a position where your life is ultimately giving God the glory. He hear me, saints, because there there's really a very unique connection between vision and destiny. 
because it is our vision that ultimately uh, uh, is given to us in order to propel us into our place of destiny. But, but the seed of our vision, it must always be built upon the word of God. See, because the God that we serve, saints, he's a God who declares the end of a thing from the beginning. You, you know, God, he, he, he be, even before he starts a thing, he's already finished. You know, a lot of what we go through, it catches us by surprise. But when you really begin to understand God, you begin to understand that absolutely nothing catches him by surprise. Because he's the kind of God that, that declares the end of a thing from the beginning. And therefore, when you begin to understand that, you begin to understand that vision, real vision, somebody shout real vision. Re real vision is when God begins to reveal to you that which he has already completed, but he reveals it to you while you're in the process of moving towards it. I I'm talking about real vision. I'm talking about a God-given vision. And this type of vision, saints of God, it has to be founded on the Word of God. He hear me today. Hear me today. I know we're talking to a lot of leaders, but you must understand that any vision that does not have the Word of God as its foundation, it is simply a selfish dream that probably will never manifest. Because every vision that comes from God, it has to be founded on the Word. Therefore, when, 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 when the Word is given to us, and when, 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 when that Word is, is, is put in our spirit in an effort to prevent the inevitable, what the enemy begins to do is he begins to work immediately to separate the believer from the Word. That, that devil, he'll use anything he can to separate you from your word. That, that devil, he, he will oftentimes harden your heart to separate you from the word. Oftentimes, he will, he will put pressure on you. In, in, in an effort to separate you from your word, he will bring about distractions to separate you from the word of God. That that's what happened here in the text because the word says that in, in that Jesus in verse number 35 he spoke a word to his disciples um, as a matter of fact Jesus said let us go to the other side now now in verse 35 it's interesting that Jesus speaks the word in verse 35 but then after receiving the word in verse number 37 the disciples find themselves in the midst of a storm it's amazing to me because if Jesus speaks the word to them, they begin to move out on the word that Jesus spoke into their lives, and now they find themselves in the midst of a storm. Now, now when you analyze this storm, you'll find out that this was not an ordinary storm. No, this, this wasn't no ordinary storm because this particular storm, it came with an assignment. Somebody better hear me today. See, 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 this storm, it had an assignment attached to it because this storm, it was designed to stop the disciples from making it to the other side. Some of y'all don't understand the other side. That's your place of destiny. The other side, that's that place where God is going to use you. The other side, that's that place where the anointing of God is going to rest on your life. So, so when they moved out on the word of God, the Bible says that, that even as they, had, as they received the word, the Bible says that, that immediately they now find themselves in the midst of a storm. I, I know some of us may not be able to relate to it, but there's a few of us who know that it seems like every time I get ready to move out on God's word, I ultimately find myself in a storm. Now, now, now hear me today, because this was not, this was not an ordinary storm, because this storm, ladies and gentlemen, it came with an assignment. This storm was designed to stop the believers stop the disciples from making their way to the other side. This storm was designed to hinder their destiny, to hinder their purpose. Now, now notice if you would, notice the timing of the storm and notice the temperament of the storm. Because the storm, watch this, the storm did not manifest until after they moved out on the word of God. 
Come on, isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing how it is that as long as you're sitting around and you're not doing anything with your life, as long as you're just in one position, not doing anything, waiting for stuff to happen, it seems like as long as you're doing nothing, you don't have anything to fight. But the minute that you decide that God has given you a word and you're going to move out on that word, up jumps the devil and here comes a storm that you did not expect in your life. Maybe I'm talking to the wrong people, but there's a few of us in here who knows that every now and then when I begin to move out on the word, when I begin to declare what God has spoken over my life, all of a sudden I will find myself in a storm. Come on, y'all. Come on. You got you to understand. You got to understand that, that this was not an ordinary storm. This storm came with an assignment. This storm was designed to stop the people of God, stop the disciples from moving to their place of destiny. And the storm did not show up until they began to move out on God's word. I believe there's a few of us who, who would be able to, to relate to these disciples and, and, and say, yeah, I, I, I was doing good. It looked like I didn't have any issues in my life. But the moment that I got a promise from God, the moment that I received direction from God, and I decided that I'm not going to worry about what folks say, I'm just going to go ahead and do what God says, I find myself in the midst of a storm. But, but, but not, only, not only do I want you to see the timing of the storm, Storm, but notice y'all the, the the temperament of this storm because the Bible says that this was not just a storm but it was a great windstorm can the church say a great windstorm come on that ain't everybody somebody shout a great windstorm now, now, now you got to understand that whenever a storm arises out of nowhere when, 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 whenever you're just moving towards your place of destiny and, and a storm arises out of nowhere, it is usually an indication that there is more going on in the spirit realm that's, than what's being revealed in the natural. Oh, don't you be fooled by this. You need to understand that, that when these storms just pop up out of nowhere, there is something that is happening in the spirit realm that if you are not anointed, if you don't have spiritual eyes, you'll slip up and miss what that devil is trying to do in your life. Man, man, just a few months ago, just, just a few months ago, right in the middle of the recession, it was in the year of, of, of 2009, in the month of November, the spirit of the Lord spoke to me during the recession session in the spirit of the Lord he gave me a word and he said son this word is not just for you but the word is for the people of God that I've called you to pastor and he spoke this word over my life and he said son let the people know that we have now entered a season of restoration it is a season that you shall eat of plenty and be satisfied and you shall praise the name of your God for the wonderful things that he has already done he says in this season you shall not be made a shame he says in this season I'm gonna prove to you that I'm your God and that you are my chosen people that I am the Lord God Jehovah who always keeps his promises he said if you didn't hear me the first time I said in this season you shall not be made a shame he said in this season son I'm gonna pour out my spirit upon your people I'm gonna pour out the spirit of God on the sons and the daughters of this house and he said you are gonna see what everybody else sees but because my spirit is resting upon you, you won't see it like they see it. They see death, you'll see life. They see defeat, you'll see victory. They see, come on somebody. He says, I am doing a great thing. Hallelujah. In, in the midst of your life. But, 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 but as soon as God gave me that word, here came the devil with one of the greatest attacks that I've ever had to deal with. But, but, but I had my spiritual eyes on. And, and when the devil raised up his ugly head, I had sense enough to know that I ain't nobody. He wasn't coming against me. What he was coming against was the word that God had given me. I wish I had some people in here who would understand that in this season, you better stay connected to your word. See, see hear me today, church. Hear, hear me today. See, see, you got to understand something. That, that whenever 
God gives you a word. Come on, come on. If you got, if God has spoken anything over your life, just just nudge your neighbor and say, "I got a promise, y'all. I, I got a promise." And, and whenever God gives you a word, you need to understand that it's the devil's job to separate you from your word. See, see, no, don't, don't, don't just look at the timing and the temperament of the storm, but look at, if you would, the attitude and the actions of both Jesus and the disciples. Look at it, y'all, because you got to understand that even though Jesus spoke the word, you got to understand that the word was not just given for the disciples. No, no, no. The word that Jesus spoke, it was given for Jesus and the disciples. Because he didn't say, y'all go over to the other side. He said, let us. Somebody say, let us. He, he said, let us go over to the other side. Now, 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 once Jesus received the word, once the disciples received the word, check out their attitude. The Bible says that Jesus was able to stay connected to the word even though Jesus was in the midst of the same storm. Wait, where you get that from, Pastor? Well, it's right there in the text, y'all. Because the word of God says that although Jesus was in the midst of the storm, the word of God says that, that Jesus was in the stern of the ship. He wasn't driving the ship. He wasn't guiding the ship. But the Bible says that he was in the stern of the ship and he was in there sleeping. See, he stayed connected. He stayed connected to his word because the word of God says that, that he was in the stern of the ship, but he was in there sleeping. Now, now read it. Read it in, and, and check it out closely and you'll find out, brothers, that, that when the Bible says that he was in the stern of the ship sleeping, the Bible did not say that Jesus just happened to fall asleep. See, see, what Jesus did, the Bible says, he was in the stern of the ship sleeping on a pillar. In other words, in the midst of a storm, Jesus was sleeping on purpose. So, some of y'all going to get that on your way home. In, in other words, in other words, in other words, y'all, Jesus, y'all know he knows everything. Yes, he is all God and he is all man. He knows everything. And with Jesus being aware that a storm was brewing in the sea, with Jesus being aware of a storm that was going to come against the destiny of the disciples, the Bible said that Jesus found him a pillow and, 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 and said, I know a storm is coming. He said, but, 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 but I think I'll just take a nap. See, 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 that says to me that Jesus stayed connected to his word. Because, because the ability to sleep in the midst of your storm, that represents a person with complete trust in the power of the word to produce and an understanding of their role in the process of production. Oh, I said something just there. See, see, you can't sleep in the middle of your storm if you don't understand the power of God's word to produce and if you don't understand the role that God has called you to play in the production process. The problem with too many of us is when God give us a word, we think we got to make it happen. When God tells us we're going to the other side, we think we got to put all this together in order for it to happen. No, baby. When God says that you're going to the other side, aside when God sends you to your place of destiny you ain't got to make it happen but what you have to do is hold on to your word I wish somebody would hear me today because God says I'm sending you to your destiny I'm sending you to your purpose but don't be fooled there's a storm out there brewing and when this storm comes you ain't got to make nothing happen all you got to do is hold on and stay connected to your words, slap your neighbor high five and tell him, stay connected, baby. Stay connected. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. I know your back is up against the wall. But if you stay connected, I promise you, the word can produce. Man, I thought I had some believers in the house. I thought I had some people who know that when the word connects with the good ground of your heart, that word can do everything. 
that God said it would do. The Bible says that the earth yields crops by itself. Somebody say by itself. In other words, baby, God is enough God where he don't need your help. Your heart is already designed to produce whatever God said he was going to do. See, 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 Jesus was connected to the word, y'all. You, you see, and, and the proof that he was connected was that in the middle of a storm, he found him a pillar and said, I think I'm going to take a nap. He found him a pillar and said, I, I, I think I'm going to get me some rest. He said, because the word has already gone forward and my job ain't to make it happen. My job is just to stay connected. Come on, y'all, to your word. Come on, tell, tell that neighbor right next to you one more time. Stay connected to your word. See, you got to understand, y'all, that, that our job as believers, brothers, hear me today. Our job as men is, is to know how, it's not necessarily to know, rather, how the word is going to produce. I don't need to know how God is going to bring increase. All I need to know is that he said he's going to do it. I don't need to know how God is going to heal me. All I need to know is he said he's going to do it. I don't need to know how God is going to deliver me. Man, don't y'all sit there and look at me like ain't none of us need some deliverance. I don't know how he's going to do it, but slap your neighbor high five and tell him, I know he's going to do it. So my job is not necessarily to know, but my job is to aggressively hold on to the word. My job is to hold tight to that word without yielding to pressure, without yielding to distractions. I know he's going to put some pressure on me. I know I'll get distracted along the way, but I will let nothing separate me from my word. I wish I had about a hundred of y'all who would go ahead and give God praise for the word that he has put in y'all. That is, you ain't praising God. You ain't coming. Come on, celebrate him for his word. See, hear me today. Hear me today. See, 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 Jesus was able to stay connected to the word. He, 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 he went to sleep on purpose. And, and, and some of us, in the midst of your storm, in the midst of this recession, what you need to do is go to sleep. What you need to do is find you a Holy Ghost pillar and take you a nap. I wish I had somebody in here who knew it. Well, help that brother, help that sister next to you and tell them, get you some rest, baby. Get you some rest because the Bible says that he who keep it Israel, he neither slumbers nor sleep. And I done just made up in my mind, if God is going to be up all night long, I just might as well get me some rest. Come on, tell somebody, take a nap, go to sleep. Got to stay connected to your word. No, 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 no. Watch this, y'all. Because we don't just want to look at Jesus' response. But Bishop Triplet, we need to see how the disciples responded. Because the Bible says that, that Jesus taught these disciples all night, all day long. And after receiving instruction from Jesus after receiving teaching from Jesus, now they find themselves in a storm and, and, and the first time that they're challenged, they allow the enemy to separate them from their word. Come on, come on, preacher. Wait, 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 where that's coming from? It's right there in the text, y'all. Read the text. You see, because, 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 because you can always, I, I found out, you know, because I, I didn't watch people, y'all. I've been around this church thing a long time, and I didn't watch folk jump and shout. I didn't watch folk talk about how good the Lord is. I didn't watch folk talk about, I'm in this thing for the long haul. But then I've also seen a whole lot of folk who talk that talk, but the moment a storm comes, they're putting up their little church finger, and they're ushering themselves out of the presence of of the Lord. And here it is, the disciples. The disciples, they, they, they get the word, but now, all of a sudden, they, they, they have allowed the enemy to, to separate them from their word. See, you can always, please hear me, you can always tell who's connected to the word of God and who the enemy 
has successfully separated from the Word of God by the things that they speak in the midst of their storm. Or if you want to know whether or not somebody is connected to their word, you listen to what comes out of their mouth when they're in the midst of a storm. Or it's easy to declare that God is good when everything is going the way you want it to go. But, but when you're in the midst of a storm, that will determine whether or not you are connected to your word because what we have done saints of God is when we get in a storm please hear me today what we do is we say things that we've been trained to say in the midst of a storm we say what we've been trained to say but the truth of the matter is we ought to be saying the things that we've been created to say because we've been trained to say what we see but we've been created to say what God's word says in the midst of your storm it don't matter what you see don't speak what you see you speak what God says in the midst of your storm don't let your eyes dictate what comes out of your mouth you let God's word dictate what you speak are y'all hearing me today see man you got to understand something about the word and a storm see you got to understand that 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 the storm can't stop your word but your word can shut down the storm. Oh, I thought y'all would get that. I say the storm can't stop your word, but your word can show sure enough shut down the storm. Listen to the disciples, y'all. The disciples, Jesus told them, he didn't say we might go to the other side. He didn't say if it, if it don't start raining, we'll get to the other side. Jesus says, let us, somebody shall let us. Oh no, say it like you mean it. Let us go to the other side. And the word of God says, Jesus said it and took a nap. But, but the disciples, they got the word. They saw the storm. And then they start saying stuff like, like Jesus. Come on, don't this sound like some of some, some church folk? You don't care that we perish? Jesus, you... You, you don't care that we dying? Well, I got a question for you. Who told them that Jesus didn't care? Who told them that they were about to die? The last time I heard Jesus speak, he said you were going to the other side. And you got to hold on to your word no matter what you see with your eyes. I wish I had somebody in here who had a word from the Lord and who in the midst of this storm that they're dealing with have made up in their mind. I'm not going to speak what I see. I'm not going to allow the enemy to change my speech. Hear me, y'all. I got to get out of here. Look, look, we can learn something from Jesus. Come on, son, let's go. We can learn something from Jesus because Jesus stepped out in the midst of the storm and, and, and Jesus said, my pastor used to say it like this. My pastor used to say, he say, when Jesus stepped out in the, in, in, in the midst of the storm, he wasn't going out there to see the storm, but he was going out there so the storm could see him. Some of y'all need to stop hiding from your storm and look that storm right in the face but hear me because Jesus said when he went out there he said he looked at the storm and he said peace be still see you got to study this word y'all you got to study this word because I found out when Jesus lift those hands lift those hands in his presence right now when Jesus said peace be still that phrase be still it means to be muzzled and not to speak again it, it was actually it was actually the same words that 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 Jesus would use to dispossess a demon of his power in other words you got to understand Jesus was looking at the storm but Jesus was talking to the devil Jesus was saying now devil you didn't say it enough in this season he, he said, now devil, shut it down. And I don't want to hear from you again. I wish I had some people bold enough to tell that devil, devil, shut it down. And I don't want to hear from you again. 
Get your hands off my family. Get your hands off my finances. Get your hands off of my vision. Are y'all hearing me in here today? Listen, y'all, listen, because we got this thing twisted. I know that Jesus was 100% God, but Bishop, he was also 100% man. And when Jesus spoke to that storm, he wasn't speaking as God. But when he spoke to that, see, because because we ain't God, y'all. And if Jesus spoke to that storm, being God, then he can't expect us to do it because we ain't God. But when he spoke to that storm, Bishop, he spoke to that storm as a man full of the Holy Ghost. Oh, I know you think you think having the Holy Spirit is just for shouting. You think having the Holy Spirit is just for running around. But I found out that the Holy Spirit, he is more than that. I found out that he'll give you power to shut down your storm. He'll give you power to tell that devil, come this far. Oh. And don't you come no further. Come on, lift those hands. Lift those hands and worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, we're about, we about to give God a, we about to give him a crazy praise in here. Wait, 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 wait. Listen, listen. You have everything you need to shut down your storm. You got the Holy Ghost. You, you got the power, hallelujah, of the whole, you, you just stir him up and begin to open your mouth and you begin to talk to your storm. You begin to say, God said to me that I'm going to the other side. And, and since you didn't arose to get between me and my destiny, I know my God didn't send you. And if my God didn't send you, he's put in me everything I need to shut you down. So peace, be still, be muzzled, and don't you open your mouth again. Somebody lift those hands. Come on, y'all, and give God praise in this place. Hallelujah. 